Welcome back to the channel. Hepatitis B serology is one of the most confusing and frustrating topics that we will ever come across. Just as we feel that we get the hang of it and we understand it, all memory of it slips from our brain and we're looking at a set of serology results not knowing what we're interpreting. So we thought we'd do the hard work for you and simplify it. Hep B is a liver infection that's caused by the hepatitis B virus and testing serology involves looking at the presence of antigens and antibodies to give you an idea of whether the patient has an acute or chronic infection versus whether they're immune from a previous infection or if they're vaccinated. So pathophysiology. Hepatitis B is transmitted in either blood or bodily fluids, so it's commonly seen via intercourse or blood contact, such as IVDU or needle stick injuries, and also via the delivery of a baby via vertical transmission. In terms of the disease itself, Hep B can range from being asymptomatic all the way to decompensated liver failure and hepatocellular carcinoma, with the latter being more serious presentations affected by the duration of infection as well as the host defence mechanism. So when we talk about serology, we really need to understand what we're looking for, and that usually involves understanding the viral antigens, viral DNA, and associated antibodies. So hepatitis B surface antigen, this is first seen as the first marker in an initial infection, but due to the incubation period being anywhere up to 200 days, it can take a while for the marker to be detectable. If you detect the hep B surface antigen, it indicates an acute infection. However, if it's present for more than six months, this will be a chronic infection. Hep B surface antigen antibody. This is the antibody the body produces as part of the seroconversion process, and it's basically an antibody versus the hep B surface antigen. When you see the hep B surface antigen antibody, this indicates the body has battled hard against the antigen and cleared it with resolution of infection. If you see this, it basically means the patient has immunity for hepatitis B, either due to previous infection or via immunization. This can be further tested. Hepatitis core antigen antibody. We don't routinely test for the hepatitis core antigen, but we do test for the antibody. Understandably, the antibody to the hepatitis core antigen is produced in response, and its presence basically determines how long it's been since an infection. And you can get two types. The IgM antibody would indicate a recent infection, i.e. less than six months, and this antibody rapidly rises and then falls to zero and is replaced by the IgG antibody, which indicates either a resolved infection or a chronic infection for longer than six months. The hepatitis B envelope antigen. This is another serological test that you may come across, and its presence suggests an active viral replication and the patient is acutely infective. Hepatitis B envelope antigen antibody. The body eventually undergoes seroconversion against the hepatitis B envelope antigen and produces antibodies against it. The presence of this antibody suggests the change from an active infection and disease to an inactive carrier disease. It remains present for life and suggests a natural immunity, and this would not be typically seen in immunised patients. Hepatitis B viral DNA. This is the last serological test we're going to cover, and it's the viral load of Hep B DNA. In simple terms, the more viral load, the higher chance of liver failure, cirrhosis, and hepatocellular carcinoma. So we've tried to simplify this in a table. So in simple terms, the five scenarios we think you should know are if you've got acute Hep B, you should see the hepatitis B surface antigen, the hepatitis B envelope antigen, the IgM antibody against the hepatitis core antigen, and some evidence of acute viral DNA load. If you've got chronic active hepatitis B, you'll see some evidence of the hepatitis B surface antigen, some evidence of the hepatitis B envelope antigen. You'll also see the IgG antibody against the hepatitis core antigen, and you'll see quite a lot of the hepatitis B DNA viral load. If you've got hepatitis B but you're now a carrier, You'll have the hepatitis B surface antigen. you have the antibody to hepatitis B envelope antigen. you have the IgG antibody against the hepatitis core antigen antibody. And you may have some but smaller amount of the DNA viral load. In terms of immunity, you really only have two possibilities. If you've got immunity for immunization, you will only see the antibody against hepatitis surface antigen. But if you've got immunity from a previous infection, you'll not only see the antibody against the surface antigen, 
but you'll get the antibody against the envelope antigen, as well as some possibility of the IgG antibody against the hepatitis core antigen. We've tried to summarise it in the table below. And breathe. I know that was a whirlwind. Hepatitis B serology is one of those topics that everyone looks at and hopes for the best when it comes to revision, but its importance is clear for your exam and clinically, so we hope it goes a long way in helping you understand. If you like this video, be sure to head over to www.dorkydocs.com and our Instagram and YouTube pages with the links below for some more amazing content. If you're revising for your AKT, we've got just the trick. We've got an amazing question bank covering the entire GP curriculum without breaking the bank. Head over to our website or via the link below to find out more. Plus, if statistics or administration is your weak point, we've rounded this up into easy to understand crash courses. Check out the link below for access. But otherwise, please share and we'll see you in the next video.